grace and peace in the name of Jesus. Salutations to the whole world. Children of Israel that are near and that are far off. Welcome to study the Bible, not the sermon. I am the originator of that motto. And they call me Locksmith because knowledge is the key. And uh, we're going to get into something th today. And um, it comes from listening to people talk. People talk and they make it seem like uh, the Ten Commandments were given by Moses. Like Moses told the Lord, this is what we're going to do. And then told Israel. More sophisticated people say that uh, it's the law of Moses because the law that God gave Moses to give to Israel. Um, which is true. However, it goes for everybody. Anybody who wants to follow the God of the Bible, you need to do the law. And we're going to see this law before Moses. And I'm actually going to do you one better. I'm going to give you the law before Adam. So here we go. Ezekiel 28, I'm already there. Verse 1, it says, The word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, saying unto the prince of Tyrus, Thus saith the Lord God, because thine heart is lifted up, and thou hast said, I am a God, I sit in the seat of God, in the midst of the seas. Yet thou art a man, and not God, though thou set thine heart as the heart of God. Behold, thou art wiser than Daniel, and there is no secret that they can hide from thee. So, a lot of people try to tell you this is a real king, this isn't a prophecy here about, uh, this is about a real man, right? And verse 3, when it says, you wiser than Daniel... I mean, Daniel was greatly beloved. And what man is it that you can hide no secret from? Verse 4. With thy wisdom and with thy understanding, thou hast gotten thee riches and gotten gold and silver into thy treasures. By thy great wisdom and thy traffic hast thou increased thy riches, and thy heart is lifted up because of thy riches. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, because thou hast set thy heart as the heart of God, Behold, therefore I will bring strangers upon thee, the terrible of the nations, and they shall draw their swords against the beauty of thy wisdom, and they shall defile thy brightness. Right? So when the Lord destroys this person, this entity, it says they're going to draw the swords against the beauty of your wisdom, not necessarily against your cities. Right? This that same Lucifer you can find in the 14th chapter of Isaiah, talking about he wants to go to heaven. And talking about um, he wants to be God, sit on the throne of God. Right? Skip down to verse 11. It says, Moreover, the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Son of man, take up lamentation against the king of Tyrus. And saying unto him, Thus said the Lord God, Thou sealest up the sum, full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. Perfect in beauty? 13. Thou hast been in Eden, the garden of God. Every precious stone was thy covering. The sardis, topaz, the diamond, the barrel, the onyx, the jasper, the sapphire, the emerald, and the carbuncle, and gold. The workmanship of thy tabrets. Only four beings was in the Garden of Eden. Satan, tree of knowledge of good and evil. Jesus, tree of life. Adam and Eve. According to Genesis chapter 3, Adam and Eve are in the dust. Sleep or dead. Jesus is God sitting on the throne that just leave us with Lucifer, the serpent. Right? Because after Adam and Eve, before Adam and Eve died, they were put out the garden. So nobody else was there. Certainly not the king of Tyrus. Right? And it says uh, middle of 13, uh, the workmanship of thy tablets and of thy pipes was prepared in thee in the day that thou was created. Right, Satan rules the kingdom of men while we're talking about Tyrus. And you know that he rules the kingdom of men because this is what he offered Jesus when he tempted him in Luke chapter 4, verse 5 through 7. Right, verse 14. Thou art the anointed cherub that covereth. I have set thee so. Thou wast upon the holy mountain of God. Thou hast walked up and down the midst of the stones of fire. Cherub are angels, not kings. It's Lucifer. Alright. Um, thou was perfect in thy ways from the day that thou was created. 
till iniquity was found in thee. Right? Iniquity is why Satan was kicked out of heaven. Right? What exactly is iniquity? I looked it up. Merriam Webster uh, dot com dictionary. Iniquity is immoral or perverse behavior, also known as sin or lawlessness. Alright, and that kind of gave it away. Sin or lawlessness, you know, lawlessness like an outlaw, somebody who doesn't keep the law. And it equates that with sin. But, in case you didn't know or not sure, you want to flip to 1 John chapter 3, verse 4. I'm not going to read it now, but it says sin is the transgression of the law. Right, so this iniquity is sin. Right, and so food for thought. If iniquity was found in Satan before Adam's creation, or at the very least shortly after his creation, and because of iniquity, he was cast out, and iniquity equals sin, then why are Christians walking around talking about that the law was given by Moses? I mean, why do we allow people to go, call God's law the law of Moses? I'm just saying, how is it that the law, that even Satan was punished for breaking, somehow Jesus is going to come in the flesh and nail it to the cross? They playing with your mind. Don't let them win. Let's catch that second witness. The next time somebody tells you that you don't have to keep God's law, you read them this. Pull out my scroll on this one. This is Galatians 3, verse 29. It says, And if you be Christ, then are you Abraham's seed. And heirs according to the promise. Alright, then they're going to say, what's that have to do with anything? We're talking about the law. That doesn't even say anything about law. Galatians 3 is where you go to kill the law and say it was nailed to the cross and it's done away with. Right? This is important though because it says, if you Christ, you Abraham's seed. Right? And that means that if you a Christian, <laughs> you Abraham's seed. Right? They gonna say, man, that's irrelevant. Abraham didn't keep the law. What are you talking about? Did he? Let's go check him out. Genesis twenty six. Check out Father Abraham, young Father Abraham. You understand me? Chapter twenty six, verse one. It says, and there was a famine in the land besides the first famine that was in the days of Abraham and Isaac went unto Abimelech, king of the Philistines, to Gerar. And the Lord appeared unto him and said, Go not down into Egypt, dwell in the land which I shall tell thee of. Sojourn in this land, and I will be with thee, and will bless thee. For unto thee and unto thy seed will I give all these countries, and I will perform the oath which I swear unto Abraham thy father. And I will make thy seed multiply as the stars of heaven, and will give unto thy seed all these countries, and in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed. Why? Verse 5. Because that Abraham obeyed my voice, kept my charge, my commandments, my statutes, and my laws. And my laws. Hmm. Remember Jesus told the Pharisees in John 8. And you go read that on your own. He told them they were their father the devil. And they said, nope, we Abraham's seed. And Jesus said, if you was Abraham's seed, you do the works of Abraham. Alright, that's verse 39. He said that. Um, the children of Abraham do the works of Abraham. And that's not just the law. That's also the commandments, the statutes, and the charges. Right? And we're going to see one of those and the judgments, he said, right? And we're going to see, he don't say one of the judgments here, but we're going to see one of the judgments of the law, right? Um, let's skip uh, verse 6. It says, Isaac dwelt in Gerar, and the man of the place asked him of his wife. And he said, she is my sister. For he feared to say, she is my wife, lest said he, the man of the place should kill me for Rebekah, because she was fair to look upon. And it came to pass, when he had been there a long time, that Abimelech king of the Philistines looked out at a window and saw, and behold, Isaac was sporting with Rebekah his wife. And Abimelech called Isaac and said, Behold, of a surety she is thy wife, and how saidest thou she is my sister? And Isaac said unto him, Because I said, Lest I die for her. 
And Abimelech said, What is this thou hast done to us? One of the people might lightly have lain with thy wife, and thou shouldest have brought guiltiness upon us. Guiltiness. I wonder what he was guilty of. What he would have been guilty of if somebody would have lain with his wife. Adultery, maybe? Because, I mean, that's the law. The commandments. Statutes. Alright? Going to be guilty of sporting <laughs> with Isaac's wife? Yeah, because the Lord's not going to feel that. That's against the law. Verse 11. And Abimelech charged his people, saying, He that touches this man or his wife shall surely be put to death. That's one of the judgments of the law. That if you violate one of these laws, this part of the law, you're worthy of death. Look at that. King of the Philistines keeping the law. Even in the New Testament, the book of Revelation tell you that fornicators won't make it into the kingdom, but will face the second death. That's for all you New Testament Christians. All right? Skip down to verse 16. It says, um, And Abimelech said unto Isaac, Go from us, for thou art much mightier than we. And Isaac departed thence and pitched his tent in the valley of Gerar and dwelt there. All right? So they sent Isaac away. Skip down to 26. We almost out of here. Then Abimelech went unto him from Gerar, and Ahuzatah, one of his friends, and Pekahol, the chief captain of his army, and said, Isaac said unto them, excuse me, Wherefore come ye to me, saying, Ye hate me, and have sent me away from you? And they said, We certainly saw that the Lord was with thee. And we said, Let there now be an oath betwixt us, even betwixt us and thee, and let us make a covenant with thee, that thou will do us no hurt, and as we have not touched thee, and have done nothing, un nothing but good, and have sent thee away in peace. Thou art now the blessed of the Lord. If you keep reading, they threw Isaac a feast, and it was all good. They made a covenant. Now, remember this Abimelech, king of the Philistines. The Philistines is the people always warn against Israel. Remember Saul killed thousands, David killed ten thousands, Samson and Gideon and Deborah, and all of them was fighting against the Philistines pretty much. Right? That's these same Philistines. David called them uncircumcised dogs. These same Philistines now are upholding the law of this stranger who's living in their country, of his wife. And then, after they sent them away, they recognized the blessing of the Lord on him. Wonder how they knew that. Guess it makes sense since Noah was a preacher of righteousness. He probably taught his sons and grandsons, huh? Hmm. They desired to make a covenant with him and made it. So, in closing, do the works of Abraham. The commandments, laws, statutes. God's law was before Moses. And actually it was before Adam and Eve. So may the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his word. In Jesus' name. <sighs> Don't forget to like, comment, share. Peace.